Hi everybody. All right, we're doing a little fuel rail work in this video. Well, fuel system work. Uh, you can see me replacing one of the AN sort of connectors here. Uh, basically, what's happening is this. Let me go ahead and explain it. So, with that back baffling in place, you can see the hole where the uh, baffling leads to the scat tubing for the oil cooler. That's the number three injector that I'm pointing at, and it needs to come from the firewall. Well, right now it's pointing at this, which is the opening for the baffling. Long story short, ain't gonna go through there no matter how much you want. I'm not cutting a hole in a scat tubing to put a fuel line through it, not happening. So instead, we are going to be putting a hole approximately there. And then we're going to be doing some creative fancy work with that, so. Yeah, that's what, that's what we've got. And we'll be getting into that later on. Uh, at the time when I filmed this, I had no idea what the hell I was going to do. And so I just, you know, it's easy enough to order a couple of AN connectors and fiddle around and theorize how to work stuff, but don't worry. Spoiler alert, it all works out. So let's move on to some other stuff that we're working on. Um, when I had installed the Airwolf oil filter, which was ridiculous, I accidentally crossed the a couple of hydraulic lines between a couple of uh, electrical cords, and that was my fault because it wasn't really looking, so now, pain in the butt, having to take it off so that I can rerun the... It's... I, okay, look, it's absolutely ridiculous. The problem is, those are AN8 size lines, so they're not really flexible, so, like, if uh, you run the lines accidentally between two other wires, you can't just, like, bend it back, you know, and, and reorganize everything correctly. It just, it ain't happening. So, what you have to do instead is, well, basically remove it from the wall, disconnect the hoses from the oil filter housing, and then remove them from the adapter in the back, and uh, it's, it's a pain. It's just a pain. Basically, what you're looking at is 90 minutes of work for accidentally running the stupid hoses between two wires. But it is what it is. Okay, so the main focus, we're back to the fuel system. So in a second here, uh, the, the story so far is that we already know that we need to get fuel from the firewall to the number three cylinder. We're not 100% sure how we're going to do that yet, but we do know we're going to need to get it to the other bank of cylinders as well. So, normally when this is mounted on the bottom, you have a fuel line that wraps around the front bottom of the engine from the number three over to the number one cylinder. Uh, in this case, we have the fuel system running on the top. I would prefer it on the top. Uh, most fuel injection systems are always on the top of aircraft engines. You know, you see the spider with the stainless steel lines running to every cylinder. Uh, I, I would rather have it up here than I would uh, by the exhaust. So what we're doing here is we're using some nylon hose that we've got, or vinyl hose, sorry, uh, to mock up a line that's going to run between the top of the number three and the number one cylinder. The idea being now, of course, we'll put more clamps on it. Right now, I've got two Adele clamp sets on it. Uh, in the end, we'll have four, plus we're going to have a little connector in the middle. Uh, but, but again, the idea is that, you know, fuel, it's a fuel, it's a full circular system. Fuel comes out of the firewall to the number three cylinder, up to the number one, over to the number two, the number four, over to the fuel pressure regulator, back to the firewall, into the tanks. And to do that, we are going to have a plethora of fuel lines being run. Uh, and after I was done messing with that, and now we are going to work on a Dell clamping in the wires. So we've got the starter cable, which we put in a while ago. Now that the engine's on, we can actually run it. So what we're going to do is ad uh, uh, adapt some Dell clamps by drilling them out to a quarter of an inch. That's the same size as the bolts used uh, across the engine. And we will be clamping on that, which will be in the next video. So, hope everyone's having a good weekend. Thank you for joining me. See you soon.